And the last thing I'm doing is actually moving data from the existing table where the picture is to this new table, right? So I'm creating data also. Now, if you look at this refactoring, right? We took care of structure of putting that data. We took care of maintaining the constraint back to the database, like back to the original table. We took care of uh, maintaining a foreign key constraint to the original employee ID that we had. And we also took care of moving the data from that original table down to the new table that we created. So split table in some ways is created using multiple refactorings, right? So you can achieve bigger refactorings by using a series of smaller refactorings. Just like Martin said in his code, a refactoring book, like you can get to a bigger refactoring by using smaller refactorings in a series of changes. One thing to notice here is we are leaving nothing to chance that uh, data is not moved or like foreign key consent is not there or primary key is not there. We are doing design the proper way that is supposed to happen. We are just making sure that all of these happen in a same step, right? We are not doing this at different times. So later on when I show code, I will show you that all four steps here is one migration that you run on the database, right? So we are creating the table, the foreign key, the primary key, and the data movement all in one go. Because when you deploy this code, the code is expecting all of that to be there, right? When you run refactorings, a major thing that you have to notice or keep an eye on is as the application changes, your database has to change in the same step. They can't change in different steps because when you deploy code, the code is expecting that new structure to be there, right? If it doesn't find the structure, then you have this weird like table not found, column not found, view not found kind of errors coming around. And then that's when you know that your table or your database and code is not moving at the same pace. Right? So here's a refactoring called as add lookup table. And then we have make column nullable. I'm not going to talk in detail about this. But same kind of structure applies to this. Uh, a good situation may be like if you are in a greenfield project, like a brand new project that is not legacy, doesn't have any other applications talking to you, most likely you don't need the transition layer in the middle, right? So you can just drop the column off immediately right there, right? So that kind of stuff is totally possible if you are in a greenfield project. So different kinds of refactorings are available here, right? Of course, like I said in the beginning, without good practices surrounding the refactoring, you can't actually implement these practices, or even if you implement these practices, you'll face a lot of failures that go along with it. Like, if you don't have enough tests, if you don't have enough tests that test the application code as well as the database code, when you deploy, you may have problems when they don't talk to each other and things like that, right? So let's see what those practices are, right? One is configuration management. We don't generally tend to configure, like put our database stuff in configuration manager. People like put version control for application code, but all the database stuff is managed by the DBA and people don't even care what's happening behind that wall. That's a bad practice to have because then you can't link the application code to the database code and create a version that is good for both sides, right? So that is what we should strive to do. Like, and it also allows for a common code ownership. Like you want to see what the table structure looks like. And at the same time, the DBA should be willing to go look in your code to see how you, how you are accessing the tables, right? So that's where he'll get to see all the SQL uh, that is being fired by the application and things like that. So that is important to have common code ownership. It is also important that you put all of your database at artifacts, like in the source repository. If you want to look at the model that someone is creating, like urban model or things like that, you should have access to it, right? You shouldn't have to like ask permission for someone to like give me a, uh, like a screenshot of the uh, uh, ER diagram or like if you go to the data teams wall, there's like this huge ER diagram printed on screen uh, with 500 tables, like that's not user consumable, like, right? So you want to, want to have access to those kinds of things. At the same time, you want to include like setup and config data, like a lot of people have these products, a list of states, list of address types, all this kind of stuff. This is all config data. You should version control it because if it changes, you need to know who changed it, why it changed, what was the difference and things like that, right? So that is important to include in version control. You, and at the end of the CI cycle, just like you create a jar or a var or a DLL or whatever you create, you should create something that goes on the database too, like a diff script or like a deploy script or whatever that takes you from the previous version to the next version, right? So make sure you uh, create that kind of artifact. And the last and the most important thing is only deploy what is checked in. 
like don't just go to the production database and make a change, right? Oh, uh -huh, I can do this. But what happens is that change doesn't get then reflected back into dev and then you have this two or three days worth of debugging, seeing why this is not working and that kind of stuff, right? So only deploy uh, code that is checked in, right? And this means like database code or any DDL changes that you do, anything that you do, right? The other concept that really helps in working this way is the concept of sandboxing, right? So if you are in this, in this red column on the X side, right? So a bunch of developers are working against a single database. You make one refactoring, immediately the rest of the team gets that refactoring, even if they want it or don't want it, right? Because you have not checked in code yet, right? Their code starts failing because now they're expecting they're, the old table that they had is not there anymore, or, stiff, uh, or you have split the table and the original table is not there, all kinds of stuff, they are into a world of pain, right? So what you want to do is if you are doing some changes, you want to have your own schema, right? Just like how you have your own copy of the code base, right? You're not working on a common code base somewhere. You, everybody has a copy of the own code base, then why not have a copy of the own database so you can change it in whatever way you want, right? so that you get the freedom to change, and at the same time you get the freedom to experiment. Like you tried something, like splitting a table this way, that way, and it didn't work out, you can roll back and start again, right? In the other case, you don't have that choice. If you made the change, the change is there, everybody else got it, then you'll have to scramble to fix it, right? And the last uh, practice that is really important is tracking changes. Like because we are making so many changes, it's important that you track changes. Like I was saying in the before, like whatever change or whatever refactoring you do, that is a migration script. All changes go into one script, right? And that is called a delta or a migration script. And migration scripts are a development time activity. They are not deployment time activity. Like generally I've seen like people develop, 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 and like, okay, now we can release this. So when it goes to QA, the DBA sits with someone and creates a migration script, right? That is a deployment time activity, very risk prone. Who is gonna test those migration scripts? who's gonna make sure that the context that was with the developer when the change happened is transferred to the DBA to make the right kind of scripts, data migration scripts that go with it. All of that is lost, right? When the change is happening, the developer knows the context. So it is better that the data people sit with the developer and write that migration script then and there. The other advantage that happens with this is because it is version controlled, you can get this change script tested like multiple times through CI, right? I'll show you how that happens later when I go to code, right? So that kind of uh, tracking changes really helps you because now you're doing it at development time. The other advantage it gives us is when you're deploying, you don't need to really think what to deploy because all of that is already done. You can deploy whenever you want to. So this is a enabling step towards continuous delivery. If you are thinking of doing continuous delivery, you have to be doing this. Without this, continuous delivery is not gonna work, right? So that what it gives you is the power or the ability to release whenever you want. You don't have to like think about when to release, right? And you can package all of these migration scripts and just like create an artifact normally and the production DBA can just like write us, run a script that will deploy this without any intervention or without any actual manual work that needs to be tested and things like that, right? The same package scripts or the same migration scripts can be used for n number of versions. Like you're deploying to UAT, it doesn't matter. You're deploying to QAT, it doesn't matter. QA, it doesn't matter. You're deploying to production, it doesn't matter. Or if some customer wants to take a beta release of your new version and wants to deploy it in his own environment, you can send that also to him, it doesn't really matter. You can deploy the same script anywhere that you want, right? So that this allows you for various databases to be at different versions. Like some product, uh, some developer pair may be working on fixing a production bug and they want to be on version 43, right? They can take a copy of, or they can check out as version 43, deploy it and they have a database immediately that was version 43 and start working, right? Or you may want to have two or three different versions in QA, that is one, one may be 48, the other may be 49, the other may be like 22, whatever, right? So you can deploy these things as you want just by looking at the version and taking the database artifact as of that version and deploying it so that you don't have to rely on the DBA or the sysops people to get you the backup as of that date and then take the tape back and then install, all of that just goes away, right? So this makes the team much more productive and gives them the freedom to be doing whatever they want at different versions. Right, of course now you're saying there is so much change coming, how is this gonna like all sync up together, right? 
So assuming, I'm assuming you're doing Agile already, and this is the situation you are in, right? If you're not doing Agile, this is the first step you will get to, right? So where you have a dev team that is doing a build by itself, checking it into source control, there's a continuous integration engine, you may be using Jenkins, you may be using Go, you may be using PFS, doesn't really matter, right? And that is talking to the same dev database, right? That dev database is being managed by your DBA team or your DevOps team, where they check changes from you, like you send an email or you like go talk to them, or you work through whatever ways, or you maybe create a change request, whatever ways you work through them, like they are making the change to the dev database. When it, time, when it comes time to deploy that change, they are making the change script and deploying it to the production the, uh, environment or the client test environment or whatever other place that you need to deploy. At the same time, they are taking the code base and deploying it to the right environments, right? So this is fraught with risk because the change management is happening at two different levels. Devs are putting code in the code base like source control and the DBAs are man managing change in the database, right? <coughs> With this new approach, what you should be doing is doing the migration scripts at dev time, right? We are not saying get rid of the DBAs. What we are saying is put them where they can provide the most productivity to the team along with the developers where they are helping write the migration scripts because design is happening when the migration scripts are being written, right? When the developers are happy with the migration scripts, they check in into source control and that's where the migration script comes up, right? And then once you check in something, if you're using CI, that checked in thing will trigger a build, right? So you use the same migration script to trigger the continuous integration engine, and you notice that the dev database is no longer dev database, it is an integration database. It's a different database that you're working against, not the same database, right? And you're applying the same migration scripts that were done by the developer, tested locally, and checked in, like there is no manual intervention here. Nobody is sitting there and writing a new migration script. It's the same migration script that is being applied to the integration database. If the build passes here, everything is good, then you can package this stuff. If the build fails, then you have work to fix it, right? So you are getting faster feedback on your changes, even on the database side, right? Once this is successful, what you are doing is you are creating an artifact. In the artifact, you are packaging all the migration scripts together creating a database deployment package, and you're packaging all of your code and creating a jar or a war or a DLL or EXE, whatever that you create, or an installer or a packager, doesn't really matter. All of them are packaged together, right? Now, once, it, once this happens, you know for a fact that when the artifact is picked up from my CI engine, both work together very well, because I had deployed the same database, and my code was running against that with all the unit tests, the functional tests, whatever I ran in the CI build. Right? The confidence level that you have on both these things working together is very high. Right? So when you deploy, you don't really have to think, will these two combinations work together? Right? It got tested, it, all the unit tests ran, your database interface layers got tested, all of that. So now, when you deploy, you take these artifacts and deploy the database side package on the database and the code side stuff on the code side, like whatever containers you may be running or whatever it is, you deploy them and both will work. Right? And since they are a package script, the DBA just, DBA or sysops or even devs, we have even worked on projects where the application has this migration scripts embedded inside it, and on startup it runs the migration scripts, basically upgrades the database itself, and goes, right? So you don't need to rely on a bunch of other external factors or manual interventions to do this, right? So, of course, you are saying, oh, this is all great, now show me, right? So let's go to code and see what all stuff I have set up. Let me come out of presentation mode. This is embarrassing. Looks like my computer is frozen, so give me a second here. Not 
good. So what I was going to show, like maybe you can catch me after I'm done here, uh, because I have not much time here. So what I was going to show is like have a setup of Jenkins that is talking to an Oracle database running in a virtual machine that is running on my machine, like a Windows machine that is running inside my, on my box, and make code changes using like Java and uh, make a change, and check in that change into GitHub, right? And then the CI engine pulls changes from the GitHub, and so that at the end, it takes those changes, applies those changes, and then gives you the change back as a build artifact, right? Uh, during this cycle, what you are doing is when you make the change locally, you are running it locally yourself, like the build script runs locally, so you are verifying the change works. Like the thing you are verifying is are there any syntax errors in the changes you made, are they working logically, and is my code the way I, because the database changed, the application is also going to change, and is my new code working with my new changed database, right? That is important. Once all of those are done, now the next step is to make sure that my unit tests are also running, right? All the unit tests, they actually talk to the database, maybe some integration tests actually talk to the database, and things like that are all verified. And once you verified, you check in that stuff. The same thing again runs in CI and creates an artifact. So you can see that your changes got tested twice already, even for the first build, right? So you have tested locally because the build, you check in only after the build passes, and it got run on CI also. So you, you already have two verifications. And as more builds happen, you have the same changes go through the CI verification again and again. So you don't have to worry about when I deploy, will these changes be good, right? So the only thing you may need to worry about is like in dev database, I may have a small size versus in production, I may have millions of rows. Like the type of change I made in dev, will it run as fast enough in production? That may be the only thing that you need to worry about. And that's where pairing with the DBA type people really helps, right? So unfortunately, yeah. thank you Shashank. All right. So here's a virtual machine that I have running. And here's a local Jenkins that I'm running, right? So you look at this Jenkins, I, am, I have this project called EvoDB that's been running for some time. I also got like a build, last, build successful last uh, yesterday night, I think, right? And in this uh, artifacts, you will see there's application jar and there's upgrade zip that I'm creating, right? So let's try to just, just build this locally here or even make a change here. I have a bunch of code and things like this. And so I am just firing like a deer. Is, is it visible outside? Right, so I'm just running a target. What it is gonna do is, uh, my database is not up yet, but that's fine. So what is happening is when you run this target, right, what happens is it actually talks to the database, drops whatever is in my schema and rebuilds the database, right? database is coming up, so sorry for that. Last minute tech challenges, but that's okay. We look at this one change that I have here, right? So for example, this is a change I introduced, right, where I'm introducing the account type as a table, account type as a table, right, and this account type is we are not only creating the table that creates the account type, we are creating a sequence that goes with it. We are giving some data, like default data for the account type. This is the setup that we need to talk about, like account type, is it checking, is it savings, is it investment, and that kind of stuff. That is also embedded in here, right? So once you check in this kind of change, the database actually goes through here, and we can even look at here, I guess that may help us look at the console output, right? So that is the kind of thing happening is, the CI engine is actually going to ping the GitHub repo 
and get all the data is going to run like a clean, this is what I was trying to run, like this DB in it, it is working against a database. Remember how we said it will run against different databases. The CI instance is running against a CI database and my local stuff here was running against my own user, right? This promo is my own user. So yeah, okay, now the database is up, right? So you see this local build that is running, that is applying all the changes in the order that they were created and that stuff is running against the database. Like there is no like fancy smancy uh, string matching and that kind of stuff that you're trying to do. It's actually running against the database, so it's verified, right? So once you have this running against the database, you have other stuff also that goes with it, right? Like you are creating test data, you are creating, compiling your DB code, you are compiling your Java code, you are running all the tests that go with it, and you are creating a distribution package, like you created your jar and you created your upgrade zip, right? So let's do that build locally here and see what happens, right? So, and all, right? So when I say all, what it's gonna do is recreate my database, compile all the code, run all the unit tests, and then create a package locally also. Right? So you are verifying the database interaction in this code setup also, right? So if you're wondering where do I get this code base, I have open source this code base, so you can look at it and play with it, right? So I did that show me part. So once you have this kind of setup done, right? So the package jar is there and the database deployment package is there. Now deployment is actually very easy. Like you just take the package and you run an ant target or a maven target or whatever that you package along with it, right? And then you can run it wherever you want to. You don't have to worry about which version goes where, right? And the biggest thing it gives you is this boat metaphor. Like that helps in terms of continuous delivery. Like if you're going from one shore to the other shore, and you have this boat that goes only once in six months, a lot of people will try to jump on that boat, right? Maybe even drown the boat or capsize the boat because of that load that it takes. This is how we do deployment because if you are deploying once in six months, once in 12 months, a lot of business people want their features in that release, right? And that, that creates tension in the development team, stress in the development team. It also leads to like lots of mistakes, a lot of stuff is being worked at the same time, creates all kinds of confusion. So instead of that, if this boat used to go from one shore to the other shore every Tuesday, for example, you have a lot more less pressure to do that and a lot more less code to deploy or changes to deploy. So you will make less mistakes and you will like kind of even go home and sleep that night, right? So that is what helps, or uh, this kind of practices help in the continuous delivery angle. So that's my talk, that's my Twitter handle, that's the uh, website I was saying where all of these refactorings are available. And that's the GitHub project where you can take the code that I just showed and maybe run it locally so that you get to see how that all of that stuff works together. That's my talk. If you have questions, I'm here till tomorrow evening. Come grab me. I can maybe show code a little bit more better because of technical difficulties here. I was not able to show you what I wanted to show.